This time of year tends to be my least favorite time of the year, uh, beekeeping. Um, I just don't recognize my beehives anymore. I'm not familiar. I just can't get a grasp on anything to do with these colonies as we prepare for winter. Um, there is absolutely no predictability and I can't see all the factors that are influencing the hives to develop this winter nest that I want them to to build a winter successfully. I know what I want them to do. It's just it's completely out of my hands and what I see in the hives going on doesn't necessarily translate into a successfully uh, wintered hive to the spring. I, I don't see all these factors influencing the hives. Um, especially this year, these hives, I don't know, they just seem to be shutting down on me too early. I notice the younger queens, of course, they're the ones going like crazy still, uh, developing a nice little nest, but the older queens seem to be slowing right down, shutting down on me. Um, I'm just going to open up a few colonies here just to just to see what's going on and uh, just for a generalized assessment this time of year I find it best uh, for me to just you know stay hands off I go through when I strip my honey boxes off and I do a, a check I do a brood check and I do it very quickly um, I just look down into the nest to see if there's brood going on if there's brood going on in that nest then is a check mark. If there's none, I flag it and I come back later and I dig down in there and see what's going on. A lot of times it's a queen replacement uh, that we just have to allow to follow through. Sometimes the hives are dead and any colony that is obviously dead I shake out and pull out. So that work has been done. I've gone through my initial assessment and the hives looked absolutely fantastic. Wall to wall brood, like eight, nine frames of brood. Um, and brooding and going uh, put some supplement on them give them some feed uh, now I get into the last week of August and things have really slowed down the Queens aren't using as much space they're not demanding that space or they're developing a much smaller nest uh, even though I've been feeding them supplement and sugar syrup for stimulation they seem to be just contracting that nest my mite counts are very low I'm not counting any mites yet uh, so you know, the best thing I can do right now is to sit on that combine and get some work done other places. To just let these hives follow through with their natural function. I just want to go through and do, do some spot checks just to see what's going on. I like to try to see what's going on. Um, in the spring, you know, anytime during the spring, I can open up a colony as soon as I get them outside of the shed. Anytime in the spring, right into through summer. Any day of the week, any day of the month, within those two seasons, I can tell you exactly what that colony is doing. And I can tell you exactly what I'm doing and how that's gonna influence the colony and what I need to be doing. Um, I got it figured out to bloody science. This time of year, it's just so out of my control. It just drives me nuts. Um, I, we are basically at the mercy of mother nature. So some of these colonies have prepared for winter already. Some of them are still in the preparation stage of winter. I'm just going to have to just take the whole group of them and let them do what they naturally do. So today I've got the smoker. And I'm just going to poke down into this colony just to see. Um, just to see. Maybe do a mite wash on them. These guys are right full of bees, like right full of bees. And they're devouring their patty. It's tough to work in a beehive. These production hives, they've, they've gone to work for me. Um, they've got this brood nest sealed right up. There's, it's kind of hard to dig down into them this time of year. <clears throat> These production colonies, they take a lot of casualties. I can't compare them to my nukes. My nukes, I make them up in June and I kind of baby them along. Um, I put them into the flow and I take them out and I kind of nurse them up a bit. These production nukes, I put some time into them in the spring going into summer 
put them into the flow in summer and I basically just forget about them and make them work for me. So these colonies get beat up a little bit. Uh, we get super seizures and we get uh, swarm issues. Um, and the problem is when we're pulling the honey, we're coming through and we're interrupting their process. Like we're coming in with the truck, driving in the middle of the yard, disrupting all the bee flight. We're pulling off the boxes, we're putting on new boxes. Uh, so we're kind of disrupting that colony as it's trying to go through its summer function. These nests are growing up into these massive nests for me. And uh, they do really work hard and they do it does take their toll on them. So we do expect to call out uh, some dead ones. Like I'm counting in this yard, probably 15% I've had to call out, uh, which is pretty high for me. Um, typically I'm pulling out the five to 10% range. And you know, I'm trying to, I'm fixing them up too at the same time. Uh, anything that is uh, salvageable, I'll put a queen cell in uh, beginning of August, middle of August, just to try to get, reinstate that nest with something going on. Um, but for the most part, this time of year, I don't, anything that starts failing on me, I've run out of time. We just shake them out, take our losses. You guys are really stuck together. So I've fed them some syrup now. And they're nicely filling out the frames full of syrup. Nice frame of brood. Beautiful frame of brood. So this frame of brood will contribute to the winter nest by the time it hatches out. It'll be into September. I like to count anything that hatches in September probably is going to be the nest that winters. Another beautiful frame of brood, some pollen. There isn't a lot of fresh activity going on in this nest. Pollen's good to see. They'll be using it later on in winter into early spring. Another frame of brood. These guys are pretty much finished up. There's not a lot of young larvae or anything going on in this nest. There's a lot of brood going on in here. It's the third frame of brood. There's another frame of brood. It's a little, little bit of eggs on this one. more beautiful frames of brood. So these are going to be hatching likely in the next week and a half. It's going to contribute to my winter nest. Here's a frame of hatched brood. Just a little bit of, uh, yeah, there's some larvae there. So she's laying in this frame. Got some eggs going on there. And this one's starting to fill up the syrup again. So, that looks really good. Tell, like I've only counted a frame and a half of actual fresh larvae going on in here. This, and a lot of brood frames are going to hatch out. So she's really, she's really slowed down her uh, her leg. Just want to do a quick mite wash in this colony, see what we're at. So there's eggs on this side of the colony. That's likely where she is. I didn't see her. There's so many bees in here. Pull out this frame. Got some brood on there, some food. 
Just do a quick look for the queen. I'm not seeing her, so I'm just going to tap some bees into here. And I'm going to put them back together. So this colony looks really good. Really happy with it. I'd like to see a little more brood laying going on right now. Develop a, a bigger, younger winter nest. But uh, it's not up to me. It's up to what the bees want to develop here. You guys are packed full. These bees are, I moved this protein patty to the side here and these bees continue to devour this patty even on, sitting on the other side of the lid. So there's still a demand for, for protein down in this colony. Put them back together. Okay, so all the older forager bees flew off. I'm just going to do a quick look down here for the queen. And that's a negative. I'll just do a quick sample. So, you know, a shake like this, shake it for 20 seconds, 25 seconds, I don't think it takes a lot to shake the mite off the bee. This is uh, pure rubbing alcohol, and then just kind of swish the bees down and see what you got for counts here. So I'm counting zero, which is really good. There's roughly, there'd be roughly 100 bees there, maybe a little less. That's good. I just want to go into the second one here, just take a peek. These guys are devouring their patty too, that's a good sign. As far as building this winter nest, um, some of these hives on me have shut down already. And does that mean they're dead? No, that doesn't mean they're dead. It just means they've backed off sooner than the rest. Uh, they might winter just as well. They might kick up into brood laying uh, later on in winter. Where some of these bigger colonies, let's say, have a big winter nest here, they might not kick into uh, brood rearing until, until later on into the spring. I, I just don't know these things. All these things do happen and are happening. Um, and like I say, that's why I go jump on a combine for a couple weeks this time of year, just to get away from these bees and just try to, you know, stop worrying and fussing about the nest. So I'm just going to poke down into here to see what's up. These guys are, these guys are devouring this patty. This is really neat. Now, whether or not that's helping them or not, I'm just assuming it is. In the spring, I can see a direct translation down into the brood nest. I can see it, especially in the spring when they're demanding so much resource that they're building these massive nests, moving them forward, and we get weather interruptions. I can see this patty keeping that springtime nest going. As far as this winter nest, I don't know. That's what I want to find out. That's what I want to know. So that's what I'm going to be looking into as we go here. I'm a big believer in, uh, like I do believe, things are changing. Um, I do believe that it's not as it's sold to you over the media or some of these groups are trying to provide the narrative for you to believe. I don't believe in some of that kind of stuff, but what I do believe is we are getting a change in weather 
we're getting and that's what's that a result of I'm not sure uh, probably us but you know what there's a huge change in our local environments here and that's because we are managing our lands different we are taking up more space with houses and cities and such we are manipulating uh, absolutely everything we can within our environment and that in itself is directly influencing what's happening on these hives and that is the exact point I'm trying to get across is it's not this huge grandioso uh, change that we have to address we got to address the problem at the bottom and work our way up we got to address the problem of losing all our natural places we have to address the problem of covering all this land with concrete. We have to address the problem of losing trees um, and farming. Farming is under huge pressure uh, to deliver and production. We are a grain farm and we fall victim of the exact same thing as dollars and cents. We do a really good job, but at the same time, we have all this technology at our fingertips right now that we are achieving absolute brilliance we just pulled off an 80 bushel crop of wheat we just pulled off 150 bushel crop of oats uh, the wheat weighed up to 67 pounds the oats weighed up at 47 pounds that is huge a canola crop of, of uh, 50 bushels an acre um, we have a silage crop that's 12 feet tall with cobs on it. it's going to give us if we'd combine that according to the math we haven't got into it yet 180 bushel that we're on top of this carbon here with you know 2,000 2,200 heat units our breeding, um, our plant breeding, our ability to um, control disease, control weeds, um, control pests, we're able to manipulate our crops to produce absolute brilliance. And it's an amazing thing. And it's really beneficial to our farm and we're making a lot of money at it. But on the flip side of that, we're not making mistakes anymore. So the change in all this landscape to agriculture before we'd make mistakes, we would have that natural diversity reappear because it's an overwhelming force forward. And that allowed our hives to survive. That allowed uh, insects and other native pollinators a place to feed on. But we aren't making mistakes anymore. So we have no place for these guys to find that diversity anymore except for the field edges and, and the natural places around. So this is the point I'm trying to make. That as agriculture progresses, we have to promote that, we have to support that because we all have to eat. This is what we set up, this is the systems we set up, and this is we're moving it forward and we're doing exactly what society wants us to do. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that everything else has to survive, everything else has to exist. So we can dedicate areas to agriculture, but we also at the same time have to look at the native areas we need to preserve uh, bushlands uh, you know wetlands repairing areas just little things like that we have every on a grid every mile road we have ditch we should be promoting uh, diversity within our ditches this is a perfect place to do it um, just a place for my bees to be able to find some nourishment agriculture has moved on is being supported with industry and everything else and beekeepers a very important part of agriculture the honeybees have been left behind we've been, kind of been forgotten we still provide a huge resource to the agricultural community we rely so much on the natural world and as agriculture moved ahead and is kind of manipulating all those natural aspects we can't do that we haven't been able to do that so all I'm trying to say is on my little rant here is we as beekeepers are completely out of control. We, we manipulate these hives the best we can, but we are influenced with everything else around us and half the time we don't know what's going on. We need help from society. We need help from agriculture, from everybody around us to acknowledge the issue and help us address it and maybe support us a little bit support the association support our research projects support these initiatives which try to preserve wetlands and these little acts of effort that try to bring in uh, the diversity that we, we've kind of lost a little bit all these things mean a lot to us 
and all beekeepers are asking is just a little, a little bit of support. This colony is filling nicely up with syrup. As they hatch out, they're back filling the, the nest somewhat with syrup. Beautiful brood frame. No laying empty cells there. There isn't much going on for egg laying. Mm -hmm. More brood. Beautiful frame of brood. Solid. This is this is very nice. These frames of brood will be uh, will be put will be the the winter nest moving forward. Another frame of brood. Got some open brood there. Another frame of open brood. This colony is in terrific shape. cells, some brood and empty cells there. Get a little bit of open brood there. There's not a lot of egg laying going on right now. She is really pulled back in her nest. Pretty much not shut down but just I would say there's there's a beautiful frame of cat brood. This side is starting to backfill a little bit. So she's not demanding a whole lot of space right now. She's really slowed down her laying. She is, she is cut right back. The whole spirit of the hive has changed. It's gone from, you know, active, massive production, broody, to uh, really pulled back. They're egg laying. They're very docile. They're. Oh, I forgot to. I was gonna sample these guys for mites. So what I'll do. I'll just run a quick sample with this thing, like I typically do. Okay, I'll add this to my sample of my yard. I'll sample this yard and see what my mite counts are. And uh, just do a few more spot checks. But from what I'm gathering here, uh, these nests are shrinking. Not shrinking, but the queen is pulled back and her laying. Um, we have, you know, real nice frames of brood. They're gonna hatch out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that's gonna contribute to our winter nest. They're back filling with sir syrup and a little bit of honey coming in. Um, you're consuming the uh, protein I put in there which will uh, contribute to the health of, of the bees that they're building for the winter nest yet. Uh, and yeah, it's, everything seems to be moving forward as they should. Um, and I'm just going to leave them alone.